Good afternoon, girls. Good afternoon, staff. Well, we're still here, still St Mary's. I would like to use this wonderful quotation by St Francis of Assisi as the turning point of my reflections today. He said wisely, right back in the 13th century, start by doing what is necessary, then what is possible, and suddenly you are doing the impossible. So why am I reflecting on this today in particular? Well, I think you've all been doing the impossible, working so well remotely, and your teachers have been working to support you also doing the impossible. But for another two reasons as well, to applaud the amazing feat of Captain Tom Moore, and to reflect on World Earth Day, the 50th anniversary of this day was on Wednesday. So turning first to Captain Tom Moore, the 99 year old war veteran, whose spirit captured the imagination and the heart of the world, and who, in consequence, has raised a quite brilliant 27 million and rising for NHS staff after reaching his goal of walking 100 laps around his garden. Originally from Keighley, West Yorkshire, Moore trained as a civil engineer before serving in the Second World War, rising to captain and completing postings in India and Burma. He said, our brave nurses and doctors are frontline in this case. This time, our army are in doctors' and nurses' uniforms, and they're doing a marvellous job. When Captain Tom started his fundraising on the 8th of April, he hoped to raise just £1,000 for NHS tra charities together. But after raising 70000 in 24 hours, he extended his target to a million. By the end of that first day, the total had been four million and the rest is history. At no time when we started off with this exercise did we anticipate we'd ever get anything near the sort of money, Captain Tom told the BBC. It just shows that people have such a high regard for matters of our National Health Service and it's really amazing that people have paid so much. As St Francis said, start by doing what is necessary then what is possible, and suddenly you are doing the impossible. Just Giving said that Tom, Captain Tom had broken that platform's record for the largest total ever raised through a single campaign. Again, start by doing what is necessary, then what is possible, and suddenly you are doing the impossible. Captain Tom had hoped to achieve the target in time for his 100th birthday on the 30th of April, and he walked the last 25 lengths live on TV with a guard of honour from the 1st Battalion of the Yorkshire Regiment. His daughter said it was just so emotional. I mean, how special for his own regiment to be there as a guard of honour. We were just thrilled and incredibly proud. So here it is once again. approaching his 100th birthday, 100 laps of his garden during lockdown, all of the money going to NHS charities, a guard of honour from the 1st Battalion, the Yorkshire Regiment, inches to go. And there he is. Congratulations. Well done. Absolutely amazing, amazing achievement. Uh, Captain Tom, how do you feel this morning? Fine, I mean, yes. I mean, I've, I'm surrounded by the right sort of people, so uh, yes, I feel fine. I hope you're all feeling fine too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are feeling much more fine. I think we've all been inspired, the whole country. It seems like the whole world has been inspired by your achievement. <laughs> oh, thank you. I thought Captain Thomas' comment was very interesting. He said, I'm surrounded by the right sort of people, so I'm feeling fine. Well, I hope that you're all surrounded by the right sort of people and are feeling fine. And if you're not, please reach out to anyone at St Mary's because we're here to help you at this very, very unusual time. Captain Tom has received multiple messages of thanks from NHS workers, sports personalities, politicians, including the Chancellor Rishi Sunak, who said, what you've done is extraordinary. As an adopted Yorkshireman, I've come to recognise your true Yorkshire grit. He was also praised by the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, during a Corona press conference. He said, Captain Tom, you're an inspiration to us all, and we thank you. 
and the Duke of Cambridge and the Duchess of Cornwall have both written two more. So now there are calls for Captain Tom to be recognised as an official honour from the Queen, while eight-year-old Regan Davies from Port Talbot in South Wales has started an online campaign for children to make and share birthday cards for Captain Tom's 100th birthday under the hashtag Make a card for Tom. Now, I don't know whether I should be encouraging you to join in this lovely initiative or not, because apparently the local post office has been so besieged by thousands and thousands, I think 75,000 cards or something, uh, that the local school has had to be uh, involved in getting the cards to Tom for his 100th birthday party. I'd like to turn now to the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, which was on Wednesday. This day has played an important role in building greater environmental awareness, particularly in the United States of America. Earth Day 2020 was dedicated to the urgency of climate change and the vast opportunities the world has to mitigate it. As we continue to adjust to the global implications of COVID-19, it is still important for our school communities to recognise how acting locally and thinking globally can still have a positive impact. You might be interested to note that Earth Day was first observed in 1970 as a day of protest and demonstrations throughout the United States. This video clip includes historical footage of the first Earth Day that shows the beginning of the US movement to affect climate change. Earth Day demonstrations began in practically every city and town in the United States this morning, the first massive nationwide protest against the pollution of the environment. In Washington, there was an awesome Earth Day warning from a government scientist. Dr. J. Murray Mitchell said pollution and overpollution, unless checked, could so warm the Earth in 200 years as to create a greenhouse effect, melting the Arctic ice cap and flooding vast areas of the world. Nationally, Earth Day was the largest demonstration ever in American history. Some events had half a million people in them. And we had an estimated 20 million across the country. Some quarters saw more than coincidence in the fact that Earth Day occurred on the 100th anniversary of the birth of Lenin, the father of Soviet communism. The Comptroller General of Georgia, James Bentley, sent out $1,600 worth of telegrams warning that Earth Day might be a communist plot. There were certainly people who had their pet causes. Some pounded vehicles apart with sledgehammers as a protest against the internal combustion engine. Others wore gas masks to protest air pollution. But also there was an almost celebratory thing, as though suddenly we were awakening to a new set of opportunities. They are talking about emission control devices on automobiles, while we are talking about bans on automobiles. We are challenging the ethics of a society that, with only 6% of the world's population, accounts for more than half of its utilization of resources. Our country is stealing from the poorer countries of the world and from generations as yet unborn. Good science education brings a better understanding of climate change and a greater urgency to tackle it. We need more women in STEM fields, and we know this because of the research by UNESCO, which has found that just 35% of STEM students in higher education globally are women. So you today, you girls at St Mary's, are tomorrow's leading geographers, scientists, campaigners and politicians. And it's worth noting that some of the most important environmental activists throughout history have been women. Science Spring by Rachel Carson is often credited with launching the modern environmental movement. And of course, today's most recognisable climate activist is 17-year-old Greta Thunberg. Her work is a powerful example of young women's capacity for leadership, and civic engagement, the kind made possible through equitable education and the kind that I hope you're experiencing here at St Mary's. So remember again, 
as St Francis said, start by doing what is necessary, then what is possible, and suddenly you are doing the impossible. So why not read Silent Spring by Rachel Carson during lockdown? As I like to say, see it and be it. And if you're inspired by this, as well as Captain Tom's walk around his garden, then you might be interested in the Earth Day Virtual Challenge. This is a worldwide run, walk, steps challenge that participants band together with a single goal in mind, which is to complete the distance around the equator, which is 24,901 miles, within the month of April, rain or shine. So there's still a few days left in which to help run, walk or ride your bike. And so to conclude with a lovely prayer to mark Orthodox Easter, which was celebrated last Sunday. It was written by St Simeon, the new theologian. His dates were 949 to 1032. And it was sent to me by Sister Gemma Simmons, one of our CJ sisters, as part of her Easter greeting to me. And so could I ask you to bow your heads to reflect. We awaken in Christ's body as Christ awakens our bodies. And my poor hand is Christ. He enters my foot and is infinitely me. I move my hand and wonderfully my hand becomes Christ, becomes all of him. For God is indivisibly whole, seamless in his Godhood. I move my foot and at once he appears like a flash of lightning. Do my words seem blasphemous? Then open your heart to him and let yourself receive the one who is opening to you so deeply. For if we genuinely love him, we wake up inside Christ's body, where all our body, all over, every most hidden part of it, is realised in joy as him. And he makes us utterly real. And everything that is hurt, everything that seemed dark to us, harsh, shameful, maimed, ugly, irreparably damaged, is in him transformed and recognised as whole, as lovely and radiant in his light. He awakens as the beloved in every last part of our body. Amen. Thank you girls for listening.